you so much for joining us. This is the very first podcast of the Muses Behind the Music. You are listening to the voice of one of your co-hosts. My name is Michelle Fallon, and I have the distinguished pleasure of introducing my goddaughter, amazing musician, vocalist, Anise Murillo. Hey, y'all. I am so excited for y'all to be tuned in with us today. We have so much amazing content planned for you. Here we are. Like, we've been thinking about this for the last few months. And I said your name the way that I said it. Because, you know, if you've ever seen her, all right, Anise, she's black, right? (laughs) She's black. You know she, <laughs> but she also is Hispanic. And I think that that's one of the things that so many people have no idea about you. I mean, well, you used to go around just saying your name, Anise Marillo, and I, it used to drive me crazy, me personally. <laughs> and, I, you know, because I, I so wanted you to always appreciate that side of who you are so like how do you how do you deal with that now like do you are you loving the fact that you can identify with this other side not just being black but being Latina definitely I think that it's come with age just me finding my identity a little bit more just as an individual I definitely that's definitely something that I've been working on being more comfortable in saying you know, that's not my name. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, I've my name has been pronounced anus, anus. <laughs> uh, that that an, that <laughs> anus one that kind of took me back. <laughs> anus Muriello is my favorite one. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. But you know, it just comes with being more confident. I'm definitely working on self confidence and being more confident in myself. Mm-hmm. And my name is Anise. Murillo. All okay. right, come yep. on. Yes. That's my name. I, uh, snap, snap, snap. <laughs> and Madrina's name is Madrina. And I just wanted to throw that out there because you guys are going to hear me say Madrina multiple times. And when I say Madrina, I mean Michelle. Michelle Fowlin <laughs> is Madrina. And Madrina means godmother in Spanish. So. Yeah, but hey, uh, that does not give anybody who's listening the permission to call me Madrina. So let me just let y'all know, if she hears you call me Madrina, you going to get so many side eyes, rolled eyes, I mean the side of the teeth <laughs> you might even get some words that are coming at you that tell you that you don't have permission to do that she's um, very protective over that name and ought to be I agree so uh, yeah this is supposed to be real informal you know this is a time for our muses I love that name that's what we're calling y'all who are our listeners our muses out here to get to know us in a little different vein and to kind of set the platform Uh, for other women who are artists, artists of the visual and performing arts, who are of the black diaspora, and you can be of the of the white persuasion, the Indian, the Asian, we are not discriminating, but we want to be able to share different feelings about our experiences in the world of the arts business. So here we are, we're both singers, and I like to say we're musicians who happen to sing when did you first know that you could sing um I feel like me personally last year just kidding Uh, (laughs) she's not (laughs) no 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 you'll hear me talk about my mom a lot but she kind of discovered it when I was a kid and she just kind of pushed that interest just paid attention to the things that I was interested in and that was music and she pushed that on me and I would sing at different church events and I would see the reaction of the people and I'd be like, oh my God, I I sound good. Like they actually (laughs) are enjoying me and I'm still trying to get to the place where I can enjoy myself that way, but uh, (laughs) we're we're working on that. That is a work in progress. But I think maybe when I was around like six or seven, if I'm thinking about as far as I can remember. Yeah. That's a young age. That's yeah. a young age. And, and that's, I mean, that's cool in knowing that. There are definitely experiences that, you know, I can remember being four and playing the piano and 
like literally just playing back a Mozart piece that had come on the radio at one of my parents' friends' home, and I knew that I wanted to do this, you mm -hmm. know. And hey, I'm not saying it was like both hands and I was ripping the piano up and down, y'all. That's but not she what I'm was. <laughs> but I she just was. Mean, I was literally <laughs> just able to hit the melody line. You know, and, and sing and, it and back and to you perfectly. I, I don't know about all of that, <laughs> but you know, that's that's where it it ended up. So six and seven, I, I get that very much. Do you believe though that you can sing? Um, I definitely think I can sing, but I mean, I would put like three A's, not like seven okay. A's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's in my saying, I'm, I'm going to be adding more A's as I go along. That's always the goal. But I'm very happy with my progress and where I've come, where I've come from. How about you? Do you think you can sing? <laughs> um, I, you know, I never think about, I never think about that. I can sing. <laughs> I can sing. You know, it's, 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 it's like simple like that. I mean, the measurements that people have about what singing is like mm -hmm. it, it changes all the time and in the different worlds that we're in so you know i'm a classical singer and singing is different than the gospel singer you know they just yeah, they don't equate to the same thing and so um you know i'm just happy that that i have a gift yeah. and i'm able to utilize it and i try my best not to think about what anybody else judges as me being able to do whatever it is. You know, they ain't give me the gift. Hmm. <laughs> uh, ooh, Tell that, them again. That, that, was, that was a preached <laughs> word right there. They Tell didn't give again, me the gift. Some, sometimes they think, they think they wrapped it up and handed it to us. Mm -mm. I, I, I no, the <laughs> gift did not come from not a single soul out here, not even my mother and father <laughs> who conceived the gift, right? <laughs> They didn't do that. So the, the creator that lies within each of us, that's the only, the only person that matters to me in the judgment call of what I do. It's funny, though, like, we, like we're branching into areas that we weren't even thinking yeah. of talking about. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's so real um, to it. It's, it's like how many times, how often do you get people or do you feel pressured into comparing yourself against other people who are out there, mm -hmm. you know? Every single day, mm -hmm. honestly. If, if we're being honest, it's every single day. I mean, you listen to people, you're inspired by people, and it gets hard because you're, you're listening to all of these great things that all of these amazing artists out here are doing, and you're like, well, dang, why can't I do that yet? Mm -hmm. But we don't say yet. Yeah. We just say, why can't we do that? Yeah, oh, that's good. That's and, good. You know, it's something that I've been working on with myself, adding yet to the end of those statements because I know that it's it may not be here right now, but if I put my mind to it and I work on it, it could be here as soon as tomorrow. Yeah. But that's completely up to me. That's good. You can you can stop <laughs> on that, you know, because I think that that's a lesson that I myself am still teaching myself. I'm still mm -hmm. learning about that, enjoying the process. I say it to all of my students, right? Um, that it's, it's a beautiful thing, the process more so than just the outcome. Because if we don't take the time to enjoy what it is that we have to work towards to get us there, then really we can't fully appreciate the end result. You know, it's like I'm not there as yet, but I'm loving this process mm -hmm. of how I'm getting there and what I have to do to do that. So we're creatives, but you're starting to tap into other areas of your creativity, like the writing. I, I love that, the compositions of it. Talk to us a little bit about that. Like you have a song that we're gonna play later on in, in the podcast at the end. And tell us a little bit about how you got into the writing and that song maybe. Yeah, writing is definitely something that I feel like is new to me. I've had um, some people, <coughs> Madrena, who have told me <laughs> that, no, you've always written, you know, she's always, Madrina's true. one of my number one hype men, always pushing me it, up. It's true. <laughs> Telling me that I've always written, but if, if, I had, if I tell it, I feel like it's something that's very new for me. I got into it a little bit more seriously last year when I wrote 
my first song that is out called Strong. And, you know, it kind of just started with me saying, I want to write something that means something to me. I've mm. gone through so many different genres, kind of exploring. I started in gospel. I went to school for opera and classical. And in both of those genres, I was singing other people's music. I was telling other people's story, even though those stories relate to me so deeply. Like, a lot of the stories that I'm singing and telling, they are relevant to mm -hmm. my life. But it was something completely different when I was the author of my own story. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. That made me jump. That made me jump. The author of my own story. It was the way she said it. Yeah, yeah, that's so real. Uh huh. Yeah, and when I wrote that first song, I knew literally in that moment, I was like, okay, this is something that I need to keep working on, something that I need to actually dive into the same way that I'm studying other things, I need to study this the same way because it was a fulfillment mm -hmm. that I had that I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure that I felt before yeah. that moment. So I really wanted to dive deeper into that and explore it. I definitely get ideas and I will just like record it and then I'll go about my business. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wish I had the time. I actually I want to find the space, mm -hmm. you know, so I can create the time, but I want to find the space, and I mean literally the environment that will allow me to, like, breathe and think and, you know, open up that creative space that really doesn't get tapped into. I do a lot of arranging. Mm -hmm. A lot of arranging. A lot and of incredible arranging, I may add. I appreciate that. <laughs> I do. And you do always encourage me. You're like, Madrina, you need to get this down. You need to have somebody record this. And, yeah, I, I, I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Like, I have a problem with doing all of these things and not putting them out because I hear one little note that I didn't like or hear one little part that wasn't solid and I'm like nope this is staying in the archives and Madrina is the same way yeah <laughs> I know I know and it's kind of crazy too some of the stuff that I'm arranging I can't play and that's <laughs> that's it's just it's just it's dumb it's just dumb but I really can't you can't play yet Oh, okay. Oh, y'all hear that next sermon? Mm, <laughs> you see what we do? You see what we That's do? That's so good. That's so good. That's so right. Okay, so let me correct myself. <laughs> I can't play yet th my own arrangement, right? And so, thankfully, though, I've had some dynamic musician friends of mine who have they don't even know sometimes that they were doing it, and I've recorded them, like Tony Walker and Daryl Hunt and James Glover who have all sat down and um, played arrangements for me. I just shared what came out of my mind and heart because it's written down, but it's written in my way, you know, the way I can understand it. Anyway, I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I'm just going to do it. Okay, I'm... hold her accountable, please. <laughs> I can't be out here alone. <laughs> I, I, ain't no man an island to himself, so you're not alone. I'm certain. You talked a little bit about some of the people who kind of help you, Tony Walker, James Glover, some of those people who you are able to just speak your ideas out and they can literally just translate it for you. Yeah. Is there anybody who you listen to or any artist out here that inspires you, inspired you to sing, inspired mm -hmm. you to direct? Who are those people for you? Gosh. Oh, man, there's so many. Definitely Leontine Price. Well, of course. <laughs> Leontine Price. So, you know, when, when people don't know that Leontine Price is, she's my life. <laughs> All right? She's my she life. She is so serious. <laughs> she is not playing. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke. No joke. I, um, I mean, inspiration for days. And, I mean, there's so many other great, um, all of my teachers, Susan Archer, coming up uh david david i can't remember your last name my mother would remember your last name piano teacher out in framingham massachusetts and uh i mean there are just so so many um ruth another teacher for voice and all of the t all of the teachers that i've had just literally in my formative years have been such great inspirations and then above and beyond my parents, but as 
especially my father. Mm -hmm. Like, my father, I say this all the time, and it's definitely something that, as the older I've gotten, I have seriously been able to appreciate all of what he has attempted and succeeded at pouring into me and just being my number one supporter. Mm -hmm. Like, Papa. 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 <laughs> He's the man, Papa. We love Papa over here. <laughs> Papa don't play. Don't, don't let Papa oh, tell y'all about Juilliard. <laughs> And we won't go into we won't we won't <laughs> go into that right now. But I'm certain you all will hear the Juilliard story at, at on another episode For that sure. we have. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you? I know you talked about your mom, your mother. Oh my gosh, you could tell it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I really, I really can. Like the like you talk about world's greatest supporters. This this chick right here has been into everything. There has not been a single solitary thing that she has not been able to do. And her mother has been at every single performance. I mean, every single performance and rehearsals. And it got to a point where, you know, eventually I took over being at all the rehearsals because we ended up being at the same rehearsals. But I mean, Normita, that's my girl. That's my girl. Knowing that you had that backing, um, because you know, the arts world, um, you know, a lot of parents, I think half the people who are out here, they would love to have just the parental backing, mm -hmm. the parental backing. So what would you say to the young person who doesn't? Mm. You know, it, that come that is something that I really have to dig deep and think about mm -hmm. because I have no idea yeah. what that is like. I don't even think that I could imagine what that would be like because like um, Madrina was just saying, my mom, if there was a such thing as being overly present, it was definitely my mom. But like, she was not a stage mother at all. Let at me all. let me let me just say that she she overly present is that's great. Yeah. You know, not like dance moms, not like that show. For anybody <laughs> who's seen that <laughs> seen that show, she's not any of them. She's not even close. Actually, probably one of the most quiet parents that yes. were in the room. But she was in the room. Yeah. <laughs> basically, like she never missed anything yeah so I guess what I would say to somebody who doesn't have that do it for you don't do it for anyone else um, and that's mm -hmm. just even with not having that or not having that you have to find a place where everything that you're doing whether this is just not even just music this is life everything that you're doing is for you because I mean I'm one who does for people and I'm having to learn really quickly that I can't always do for people because people are not always going to do for me. Yeah. So you really, really have to find that healthy balance. It's, it's amazing to want to make your family proud. It's amazing to have these people in your life that you are doing your why. It's amazing to have people be your why. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to come first and you have, you have to be your why first. It has to be something for you. Your outlet, your passion, yeah. your fun, purpose. Mm -hmm. purpose, fun, any all of it. Yeah. It just it has to be stemmed from you first. And then everybody else, that's great. Give them all the love that you want to give them. I'm not saying say forget everybody, but <laughs> definitely put yourself first. It's yeah. okay to put yourself first, especially in a dog eat dog industry and world like this where it's going to be a lot of people who's not going to ever put you first. Yeah. So some you have to be the person to do it for you. Yeah. It's okay to be selfish. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of people, and um, I think that uh, women out here who are a part of this business, I don't care if you are a performer, if you're an entrepreneur, if you are a teacher, I don't care if you're an arts administrator, and you are high ranking, you are up there in the business, you realize that there are parts of you that you had to develop 
that was selfish in nature, taking care of you because you had so many other entities and people and responsibilities to do. And there is no possible way that you can ever do you to the best of your ability with the excellence that you need to do your job at if you don't take care of yourself. And that's being selfish. Mm -hmm. It's, it, you know, and a lot of times we're being selfless and we're actually killing ourselves and we're, we're beating ourselves down. And, and in this industry, you do have to have that kind of like other side, that dogged selfishness mm -hmm. that says, mm -mm, no, this is going to be for my best interest that I'm doing this. I cannot focus on what everybody else needs me to do or wants me to do because I know the outcome of doing that mm -hmm. is going to be more taxing on me. Mm -hmm. You know, tough choices that we always seem to um, have to make. So. Who would you collaborate with, like, and 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 what in in what genre? Yeah, you know, this is really interesting. I really been, I want to collaborate with a rapper. Oh, I feel I'm a rapper. You never asked <laughs> okay, me. Okay, all right. <laughs> Give me a beat. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Michelle, and I'm here to say everybody's listening to us today. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, we got Woo! some multi-talent in here. <laughs> but no, really, yeah, I want to, like, I really want to collaborate with a rapper. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of people that, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of different types of musicians and artists that I haven't collaborated with, but that's just the most fascinating one with me. That's I don't think cool. people would really see me collaborating with a rapper, which, like, kind of makes me want to do it more. That's what I like too. I like yeah. that too. I like because I'm like, no, I can't see it, but I'm like, no, I want to see it. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. And so what would you what would you be doing? What genre of music would you be singing? I don't know if many people are into Chance the Rapper. His coloring book mixtape to be specific. It's actually it's a rap album, but mm -hmm. it incorporates like jazz and gospel elements to it. I mean, Kirk Franklin has a song on yeah. it. And that's the kind of rap that I would like want to collaborate with. I mean, we've heard, so a lot of people may have heard um, Kanye West's Ultralight Beam song where he had, I want to, I forget who the singer was on it. It was, it's Man. a very famous gospel singer that I cannot remember the name of her right now, but that is something that I would love to do. Yeah. I so like, check that song out, and you guys will hear exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to check that out. And I, I can I can attest to uh, Chance the Rapper's album because you're the one who introduced me to it. And that thing Fire. is funky. Fire. Funky, <laughs> uh, funky hot. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely dig that. Uh, you know, if you, because I feel like you're about to ask me the same question <laughs> about collaborating with Leontine Price. Yes. Let's move along. <laughs> What kind of collaboration would you want to do with her, though? Would you want to sing a duet? Would you want her to be a collaborator with you as far as, like, a coach or, like, a teacher? Yeah, that's it. As, okay. a, as a coach. <laughs> as a coach. As a matter of fact, I, I don't even necessarily want her to hear me sing. I know that kind of sounds crazy. I just want to sit. I just, I just want the wisdom. Mm -hmm. Like, I've, I've been fortunate enough to work with Sylvia Olden Lee, who is Kathleen Battle and Jesse Norman's vocal coach, um, amongst so many other um, vocal coaches, and um, Charlotte Holloman, who was my vocal coach, and Carmen Balthup and Regina McConnell, and uh, just just great names. Isaiah, Isaiah Lurie, who was my mentor in pedagogy. And I mean, that to me, the things that they used to just sit and talk in lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, conversations, like we would do 30 minutes of singing and have two hours of conversations. <laughs> That's priceless. Mm -hmm. That's priceless. The, the, the amount of information mm -hmm. that I gained from listening to these people who had been all over the world and in the business and just amazing, just amazing. You can't pay for anything like that. So, uh, Miss Price, <laughs> your humble follower would love Right here, Michelle Fowler would love to just sit in your presence. Somebody out there knows this. Somebody and can connect me to her. Go on ahead, y'all. Do your magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's your what was your favorite place to perform at? Mm. Honestly, when you perform at one, they all kind of start to mesh together in your head. Mm -hmm. I feel blessed to even be able to say that. 
very fortunate. How about your favorite performance then? Like, do you do have like a performance that for you just was, you were like, woo-wee! Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's very easy. My favorite performance was last year. Last year, y'all, very, kind of recent. Last year, before the world shut down, pray for us. (laughs) Right. Um, Right. Right before the world shut down at the Washington National Cathedral. First of all, it's awesome to sing in there because you don't really have to try too hard. Mm-hmm. Well, at least I don't. No, no me too. <laughs> me too. Um, the resonance in that place is just insane. Yeah. But also just that performance um, specifically, um, I was singing Fight On by Kevin Donaldson? Davidson. Davidson. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just a, a different experience for me. I feel like that was one of the first time that I actually felt like I let go and it was just a complete release of a niece. Release of a niece. Yeah. Yes, I need to have that like yeah. tattooed on me somewhere. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's release real. of a niece and um I was able to just let God fill me up and it was him speaking through me. I mean mm-hmm. when I watch the video back and I and I hear some of the things that I was doing and I look at myself and I watch myself and I watch the synergy between the two of us because you guys already know that my mm-hmm. Madrina was on stage directing, killing it. <laughs> And when you have somebody who's on stage with you just feeding off of your energy and adding to your energy, it's it's an it's just an inspiration. The whole thing is just inspiring. So I felt like I could really give all mm-hmm. of me, all all that I could give. I was giving all that I could give. Yeah. And Unfortunately, I don't always feel like that. I mean, there's times that I get really close, but I feel like that was like the time where if there was a button that there was like, yep, that was it. (laughs) I hit the button that day. I hit the button that day. And I really, I mean, there's been, it's been the pandemic and everything, but I, I really haven't had another experience like it recently. Yeah. Um, But that's the goal. That's the goal for me to be there every single time and then beyond. Yeah. What was... A performance for you I feel like it's a little bit different for you because it could be singing it could be directing it could be both are they the same are they different oh they're all different they're oh, wow. all different yeah you know I have different energy for everyone when I'm when I'm directing I don't tap into the same space that mm-hmm. I do if I have to sing first of all if I have to sing it's a it's a more anxious filled space Mm -hmm. you know because I'm always still trying to undo the the mental stuff Mm -hmm. crap that I got in my head about you know having this perfect sound instead of just being free while I direct I am I am so free Mm. I am like I am in my most creative space. Wow. Yeah. That is so interesting considering the singing came first. Yeah, that's wild, right? Yeah. So beyond the gift, come and tell us something what what's one of the best advices that you've been given? The best advice that I've been given is to enjoy my gift because it's not something that I earned per se. Yeah. It was something that was literally gifted to me. Mm-hmm. And that kind of rolls into another part of the advice that was actually the better part, which was it's not about you and don't for one second think it's about you because the moment that you do, that's when it starts to go away. Yeah. It starts to get away from you. And that is one thing I do not want. I yeah. do not want this gift to get away from me. This is my life. So if it takes me removing myself and humbling myself for me to keep this gift for the rest of my life, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. So that is the best advice that I've ever been given. What is the best advice that you've been given? And what is some advice that you've ignored? (laughs) Well, we know what I've ignored. (laughs) (laughs) Juilliard. (laughs) I mean, and, and you know what? That goes back to what you were saying earlier, though, about being selfish and making those choices. Yes, at nine years old, I was able to make that choice because I knew that that's not what I wanted Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I loved it. You didn't have to. My parents didn't never have to force me to practice. I was at that piano eight hours a day, and I am not exaggerating when I say that. 
they had to force me to do schoolwork. Wow. <laughs> but I, and if I'm honest with myself, when I went to Juilliard and I saw the other students, there was a level of fear mm. that hit me that I'm not as good as what I'm seeing. Wow. And so that's the, that's the thing. I ain't never tell my dad that neither. Like, I'm being honest with y'all before my father ever knew this. And I don't think I'll ever tell him because then it will just add more fuel to where he is already. But that's the truth. I saw these kids who I felt were better than me, and mm. I didn't want to put myself out there. Mm. You know? And so I just said no. And then other routes of the music started to, to sprout. Yeah. You know, but um, the best advice that I've been given, I think it's the same thing and um, that you were saying, but I was given it through a sermon. And one day I heard the sermon about the talents. And for all y'all churchgoers out there, um, I know we've heard this parable about the talents so many different times, but it was the delivery of this that I have never heard before. And that's when it had hit me and the minister had said that all of this is not about you. It is, it is completely about what God, the creator, the power, the omnipotent, the omnipresent um, has given to you. It's only on loan. This is on loan. Mm -hmm. So nothing that we do, whether we sing, whether we play, we write, we, we bake cookies or we bake cakes or we're awesome um, chefs. Whatever it is that we do in our lives, we're, maybe we're completely organized. Organization is a gift. You know, there's so many different compartments to this gift. It doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. We're here to impact and to pour into. And so that thing right there, I don't even remember the preacher, but that thing hit my life so much that I was just <laughs> like, I'll tell you the truth, that's when I stopped being nervous to go on stage. Mm. At that moment when it hit me that this ain't about you, Michelle. Like, what are you nervous for? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, why would you be nervous? Who are you to be? No, you got God who resides in you. And that's why I'm always praying before I do anything, self decrease, God increase. Mm -hmm. Because that, that really is, that's the crux of everything that we do. And this ain't no spiritual podcast, but you can't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you just, you can't help but add that. If yeah. it's a part of who you are, it's going to be in your speech. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in your tie together. But I'm so excited about some of the other things that we have coming. The, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to be able to do this podcast was because we're in two different generations and we're in some similar areas of music and then some different areas into the music business. And um, I think that there are many things that we both can contribute and learn from one another and be able to share with our muses out there that they'll be able to gain and we want to get the same thing from you all you know and be able to talk about our experiences like go into um, what some would call a PWI a predominantly white institution versus go into an HBCU you know the similarities and the differences between that for stuff that we have coming up you know as a woman in the business do you have children or don't you? You know, in some genres of music, it's permitted. In some, it, it's kind of still frowned on, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, just so a lot of different conversations to help build and to bring on other people who are so talented and they're out here and they're, they're trying to do this thing. They're composers and they're musicians and they're arrangers and they're arts administrators. And, you know, I can't even name them all. They're music therapists and they're all women. Yeah, they're all women and they're busting their tail mm -hmm. to break through the glass ceilings of so many different things alright we're going to wrap things up but before we go before we go tell us please off the top this doesn't even have anything to do with music <laughs> what's the most trouble you've ever gotten into these people need to know uh, of course they need to know <laughs> yes they do <laughs> Um, this is not gonna, this might sound like something that's like not that bad, but ugh, it was bad in my household. 
Um, and I'm actually sitting next to the trouble, the source of my trouble <laughs> in this <laughs> situation. Um, long story short, a lot of you know that I went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School where oh, Madrina is the choir director extraordinaire. And um, I was in her chamber choir. <clears throat> And um, that 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 sound <laughs> has a lot behind it, y'all. I didn't want to say against my will, but um, <laughs> you, it was it's out now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in chamber choir. I wanted to be in gospel choir, but that's neither here nor there. And <laughs> we were going through something at the time where Madrina loves to make sure that any group that she's in front of knows that you're only as strong as your weakest link. Mm -hmm. And we happened to have a lot of weak links that year, and it had nothing to do with talent or ability. It just had to do kind of with discipline and just, you know, we're yeah. in high school. We want to go hang out with our friends. We don't want to go home and practice our music. We don't want to go home and sight read. We want to go across the street and get food and hang out. Yeah. Um, and that's what people were doing, and it showed when we came back into class and we didn't know what was going on and we weren't ready. And Madrina doesn't accept anything less than ones when we go to county <laughs> assessment. And that was quickly exactly. approaching <laughs> at that moment. So it's close to the end of the year. And, you know, we had a lot of seniors in um, chamber. I was a sophomore. So, I mean, I wasn't as upset as most people <laughs> were. But um, she decided to give everyone C's and lower. I brought home that C to my Correct. mother. And she acted like she... <laughs> like it was an F <laughs> and she acted like she could not call the source of the C and figure out what was going on. Anise, you say you want to do music. Okay. How are you going to bring home a C? I mean, you would have thought that I was getting expelled, that I was in this music. I was getting kicked out of the oh, music this program. Story is great. <laughs> and she was just livid. So I got my phone taken away. That's right. No TV. I didn't watch much TV, but I was miserable for like three days. <laughs> Oh, three <laughs> days. Three days. I, I don't think I should have been miserable for one, considering Madrina was just trying to teach a lesson. And it was a progress report. It wasn't even a report card. So yeah. I was like, I already know two weeks from now when my prog when my actual report card comes up, this C will not be on here. So but, but I guarantee, I guarantee that the lesson was learned. Oh yeah, it was definitely it learned. Was, it I came was learned. came back to school the next day. I mean the whole class class was in tears <laughs> except for me I mean I was just sitting there like is this is like actually real life right now but it was <laughs> and that is the most trouble I, that I have been in unbelievable that and remember. that's the truth that's the that's the truth y'all that's the truth like you know you talk about a goody goody it was her Good, goody goody except for those teenage years Ugh, okay I mean anyway. everybody has them everybody has them <laughs> But never any trouble. <laughs> but uh, so uh, share with us what's coming next. What, what do we have coming up next for our muses to get ready and listen to? Oh, so next week we will be diving into episode two, which is entitled Know Yourself and Know Your Worth. I am oh. so excited for you all to join us because we will be diving even deeper into our experiences as women of color in this industry. Yeah, so thank you all again, like super duper thanks. We're so excited that you all were able to join us. Until next time, I am Anise. And I am Michelle Fallon. Oh, you gotta stay strong, strong.